Hi, my name is Alistair Hunton. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Storylines. I'm here today in Chicago, the Windy City, uh, speaking at this wonderful event, Build, all about senior housing and how Storyline and senior housing uh, can work together uh, with their customers for the independent living space. So come along and have a listen to my talk. Please welcome to the stage Alistair Punton, co-CEO and founder of Storylines, and Tim Mullaney. All right, everyone get excited because it's time to talk about senior living on the cruise ship. <laughs> um, so the way this is going to work is that uh, Alistair is going to talk about the Storylines concept and where senior living might fit into it. And then I've got some questions for him, and we are taking um, audience questions, so uh, fire up the Slido. And Thank with that, I'll hand it over to uh, Alistair. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Who doesn't like to live on a cruise ship, right? So we're Storylines. We're the world's first affordable cruise ship live-in option, so a cruise condo vessel. Uh, the vessel itself uh, has actually reconfigured it now to 670 residences. Um, 230 odd meters long. Um, you can see there on the slide, uh, we've got three uh, half decks on the on the forward section, which will be uh, completely built from from scratch. All the all the existing decks will be completely remodeled. Um, there's a mixture of cabins that have uh, interior cabins, window, French balconies, and then the big penthouse type suites as well. Um, so as far as the actual refit of this vessel, uh, as it's currently in service, there's a full medical facility on board. So that's obviously the number one question that people ask is, what's the medical facilities? So there's a doctor, there's nurses, there's physio, those type of uh, services on board and available. Um, a helipad for medivacs, um, a yacht style resident area as well. That's on top of the, the forward deck 14 there. Um, the whole styling of the ship is designed to be that super yacht experience, um, and everything that we've uh, put into the design, the design brief has been all about privacy. Although you're on a cruise ship, you still need to have that element of, of privacy being a full-time liveaboard solution. Um, we've got the market garden and the kitchens available, so uh, residents can even cook their own food, so you don't have to be waited on hand and foot, although that is an amazing thing to have. <laughs> Um, people still like the idea of being able to make a peanut butter sandwich. Um, or of course, you can, they're full, full kitchen, so you can make uh, any, any food you like, entertain for friends and family and, and all that as well. Um, there's a choice of over nine dining options. So we've completely removed the 800-seat um, dining hall in, in, the, in the deck eight, and we've turned that into what you might class as like a, a Main Street USA type um, situation. So uh, what, the, what I mean by that is, uh, eight to ten smaller restaurants, 60 to 80 um, packs each, and um, each of those will have different decor, so it might be a, a Chinese restaurant, an Italian restaurant, a pizzeria. So you can walk into that space and find privacy and different menu options, so there's always something different to have. Um, and then there's a marina for ocean access as well, so for your, your kayaks and jet skis and all the toys, all those things are available. So we've spent most of our time on working on the resident experience. I know you've heard that word a lot today. Um, we spent most of our time in the redesign working out what exactly do people want when they live on a cruise ship, because it's quite different to live in on, on land. Although our cruise schedule is, is um, quite unique as well, we spent 3.5 years on average for a circumnavigation. So that means we can spend longer in ports. So we can engage with the local communities. We can really get involved. Um, we spend weeks and months in regions rather than just a day or half a day. Um, so that, that's the fundamental difference in our, in our cruise schedule. It's very affordable as well, um, so from 300,000 and up. So it's quite affordable to, to most people. And the annual fees on those um, start from around the sort of $1,900 mark per person per month. So that's quite affordable. And you know, I know they were talking before about uh, San Francisco um, being completely unaffordable. Um, that's obviously on the extreme end, but for most major sort of US cities, we're very comparable. And those fees, just to be clear, that covers food, drinks, alcohol, um, some shore excursions, uh, medical facilities. It's an all-inclusive all package. Okay. Um, 
Okay. All right. So, um, can you talk a little bit more about the potential for senior living providers to get involved in this? And I think you recently started to present this idea to senior living providers. So what has the response been and what ideas have they proposed or have you proposed to them about their involvement? Yeah, so, um, yeah, like you said, we've, we've presented this to a few providers and there's very good interest there, of course. Um, the fundamental thing that they see out of this is this is a potential for, for them to have a, a, a differentiating factor. So if there's development A and development B and they're exactly the same, you don't want to race to the bottom of price, so you, you can value add to, to their end users. And that can be in the sense of um, two to three months on board the ship every year, or uh, they might want to come and live on the ship for a year before they move into um, the independent living space, um, a land, land, land based independent living um, option. Got it. And I think you'd mentioned that there was even an idea that it could be offered as a perk to staff if the senior living provider owns cabins on the ship that uh, they could send staff members. Absolutely. And that's been a big thing as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, independent living staff can't usually work from remotely like a lot of other uh, industries can, but it can definitely be a perk. And that's something that um, there has been quite a lot of interest in, not only in this sector, but across, across the board as well. Great, and um, can you talk about, I guess, A, have any senior living providers committed to purchasing cabins? And can you talk about um, the interest you've had even from other groups or, or how it would work in terms of do you purchase a deck, do you purchase a single cabin, et cetera? Yes, yeah, so uh, we've only just started down this road from the, um, the senior housing space. Um, it has been very well received. Um, I've always had some great conversations here today and also yesterday. Um, yeah, uh, they can purchase blocks, they can purchase decks. Uh, if someone wants to purchase a complete deck, and you'll notice on the previous slide, the deck seven is, <laughs> isn't actually included on the website simply because that has already been purchased by a group. So yeah, we're open to those type of arrangements. Um, yeah, the, the ideal for if, if it's a smaller operator, that might be five to 10 cabins where it's, it's big enough for them to have a, an influence on their land-based operation. Um, and also be able to use it for the perks for their, for their uh, staff as well. And um, in those conversations you're having with senior living, uh, can you talk about some of the concerns? I know you mentioned that you know, everyone's first question is what's, what are the medical facilities? Um, what are some other concerns or questions that are, are common in these conversations with senior living? The medical has been a big one, of course. And going back to your previous question, if someone was to um, take a whole deck, for example, then we could look at perhaps installing more medical faci facilities to facilitate that. Obviously, we've got the doctors on board, the nurses, physios, those type of things. But if we needed extra nurses, we can accommodate those type of things. There's enough room on a ship this size. Although it's classed in the cruise industry as a medium-sized cruise ship, um, there will be around, up to 1,250 odd passengers. We expect more likely around 900 passengers at any one time. So there's a huge amount of space. Uh, so if we needed to add more of those auxiliary services, there's, there's ability to do that. Um, great. And I know you mentioned some of the amenities already and, and the need for privacy and, and sort of not having, I think it'd be kind of a booze cruise feel. But I'm wondering if you can speak more to the lifestyle on board. And specifically, I think we hear the phrase thrown around that senior living is like a cruise ship on land. And I think a lot of people have a negative reaction to that because they say, you know, Senior living is, should be about engagement. Our residents actually want to feel a sense of purpose. They don't just want to sit by the pool with a margarita all day. Right, and the residents obviously have the option to do that. Um, but we're about enriching experiences. So um, everything that we've designed is to enable the residents to be involved. So Storyline sets, I guess, the, the, the ideas in motion. And it's up to the residents to really take that and adapt it and involve it to suit their uh, their wants and needs. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, there's a microbrewery on board. So a lot of people like to brew their own beers in their garage. So by living on the ship, do you lose that ability? Well, no, you don't, because there's a microbrewery. You can get involved with that. So it's not just a, a passive thing that you can watch and see and uh, you drink the beer, but you can also get involved with the brewmaster, with a group of your friends who also have, share that same interest, and go out and source local ingredients to bring back to the ship to create the beers to then for everyone to enjoy, and that carries on to the wine bar, where there's a community chest of, of, of wine from, 
from, from the actual residents. Uh, library, for example, not only is it the books that we stock in the library, but also the residents have the opportunity to bring on books themselves. So that creates engagement when we sit down for din at the dinner at one of the restaurants and I see that you've read one of my books. It's, an, it's a conversation we can start. And we've used that same principle across the board on everything on the ship. And if there's anything that we've missed and there's a group of 20 odd people who want to do one thing, whatever it might be, um, there's facilities and ability to be able to do that and implement that onto the ship as well. So it's an active environment. Uh, great, and then can you talk about what the resale process would involve if I'm a senior living provider and I purchase a block and then I, I, it's not working out for whatever reason, I, it's possible to sell it then? Yeah, absolutely. So it's just, in that, in that respect, it's exactly like a land-based property. You can sell it, you can rent it. Um, there are limits to who can come on board and how long for. Uh, for example, uh, the, only, the shortest term ticket if you, don't, if you don't own or a friend and family would be three months. And that maintains the quality of the people on board. As you said, that booze cruise um, scenario you don't want to get, in, get into. So by having that minimum three month um, world cruise segment, we call them, it means that you're only getting people coming on board who want to live that lifestyle because that's effectively what, what, what it is we're selling. It's a lifestyle opportunity. And I, this isn't the first time, I think, that we've heard the idea of somehow incorporating senior living into a cruise ship. Um, and I think that in the past, these ideas haven't really come to fruition. So can you, how, how do you sort of differentiate what Storylines is doing from some of these past concepts? Yeah, look, and it's, I guess, you know, the right thing at the right time. Uh, the market is ready for it now. Um, the cruise market itself is ready. If you, if you go on a cruise, you'll probably most likely find someone who's doing a back-to-back -back sort of cruise. So the demand is there, just from a cruise perspective. And then when you add in the other element of senior housing, then yeah, that's, that's a whole new market segment. So why are we different? We focused most of our energy, like I said before, on the lifestyle side of it. So making sure that we hit that brief, number one, what is it people want to be living on board that ship full time, to keep them engaged, and to keep them living there. That, that was the number one priority for us. And I think some of the past ones, uh, past ideas, were also trying to build ships from scratch. This is a ret kind of retrofit, right, of an yeah, existing ship? Exactly. So, you know, the fundamental difference, I guess, is, you know, we, we've got the ship, whereas some of these other people have had an idea, may have been too early or half-baked or not enough energy put into it. I can't speak to them. Um, but, yeah, we spent a lot of time on that, the research and development, before we even went out to market, even once we had the ship, we spent another six months just really refining what it is people want. Okay, great. Uh, let's see what questions we have from the audience. Um, here's someone who's wondering, how does the adult child and family visit the resident? Is, is there a cost just to board the ship? Right, so, and that's a great question. So, you know, that word multi-generational has been thrown around a lot today. And we absolutely hit that brief. And in fact, we've already got residents who will be coming on board with their children who are already homeschooling, and this is just another version of that for them. So they're selling their homes and coming on board. And so we expect a small portion of kids on board the ship at any one time. So there will be facilities. There won't be the rock climbing walls and those type of things you might find on, on other cruise ships, uh, but there will be facilities for them. And that's great for that multi-generational side of it. And to answer your question, um, friends and family can come on board. There are cabins available for them to use. Um, there is a small cost associated with that, of course, um, that covers all their, their dues on board, so that, that it allows them, them, um, them to have all the same uh, access to everything on board the ship. And uh, can you, are there legal issues with having a floating senior living community in international waters? Have reg regulatory uh, concerns come up at all? Yeah, it's a legal minefield in, in that respect um, because... <laughs> <laughs> You've got, well, you've got the ship uh, flagged in one state, you've got residents coming from another jurisdiction, all these different jurisdictions, but uh, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the flag state, so um, that's, that's the fundamental law. Um, when, you move, when you move into territorial waters, then it changes, but it's quite a deep question, and um, it's really more of a specific um, thing that you need to talk to one-on-one -on -one with the individual Whoever asked, that, whoever asked that question, to actually answer that properly um, to their needs with their consumers. But effectively, it all comes down to the flag state, so that's the most important thing to think about. Got it. And 
how about uh, insurance coverage in international waters, uh, I guess, for the, for the resident who would be sailing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're working with a number of the major underwriters at the moment. Um, you know, the US health system is interesting at the best of times. I'm obviously not a US citizen, I'm from Australia, as you might be able to tell from my voice. Um, but yeah, we're working with a number, of, a number of the providers right now to provide a solution for them to live on board full time and still have all the same coverage that they'd expect live in land-based in the US. And how do you see, do you see the um, sort of floating condo appreciating value over time or what happens to that, you know, if it's three million plus unit? Yeah, yeah so um, what we've got in place is the ability for anyone who purchases it now that at, at the end of the useful life of this ship, which will be 21 years, that they would then get to roll over into a future ship so it, from their perspective, it's uh, more of a perpetuity type arrangement. Um, will it appreciate or depreciate? On a long enough timeline, it only has to go one way as a, as a cruise ship has a limited lifespan. Um, but with that rollover effect, we sort of mitigated that. Um, but in the short term, uh, depending on supply and demand, I, I can see where it's going. Um, there's only one other, one other example of this globally, and currently that's seen appreciation. It has been for the last seven to 10 years, so um, who knows. And I guess that gets into another line of questioning, which is about, um, you know, this is the first ship. Can you talk about just logistically um, what the timeline is for getting this in the water under the storylines model, and then into the future, are there plans for other ships? Well, we've got this ship right now, so this is the number one focus. Um, we spent the last four months developing the product specific to this ship. Um, and just gone out to the market a month or so ago. Um, the timeline for this would, should have this on the water in June, July next year. And is that, uh, is, the, is it initially embarking, I think you said from Portugal, is that right? At the moment from Portugal. Portugal. Um, we're just in the process of locking down the yard. Uh, it will be a European yard, so Portugal's sort of in the middle, um, which makes it quite easy. Great. Um, can unit owners put their unit into a rental pool of some sort? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if one of your consumers or yourselves wanted to purchase uh, but weren't wanting to use it or you let your consumers use it for a period of time, we can then rent that out for you um, and there's a rental return on that. So it's a, a cash positive position to be in. All right, great. Um, I think that covers all, the, all of our questions. So Alistair, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.